This morning's guest had a dream of representing his country in the Summer Olympics. It didn't happen, but he did represent his country in the Winter Olympics three times. Meet an amazing Jamaican bobsledder. Coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Holiday Inn, Hard Rock Parkway. We're focused on Triumph Over Adversity, Part 2. And we're visiting with three-time Winter Olympian, Devin Harris, hey. and the author of a, a motivational speaker. Yes. Thanks again for coming back. Yeah, it's been great, man. Great was, being with you. It was you. so great yesterday. I just felt compelled to come back today. And, of course, staying at the Holiday Inn, Hard Rock Parkway, and being so close to the Hard Rock mm -hmm. Park, I hope you got over there. It's an amazing place. Um, I hope to, to do that. I haven't done it yet. But Get on out there today. Yet. That's I, right. I have to go let my hair down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your family would be thrilled to get you on back to New York. Sure. So. We got into a lot yesterday, but there's still a lot of questions that we wanted to highlight. And of course, as we think through the idea of being a motivational speaker, traveling all over the country, traveling around the world, mm -hmm. speaking, and of course, focusing on staying positive and uh, getting through a lot of tough odds yes. to become successful. One of the big questions I think a lot of folks want to know is, if you weren't a motivational speaker and traveling all over, what do you think you'd be doing? You know, Greg, that, that's a great question because, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I've been speaking for 10 years now, I didn't even know that such a thing existed, a motivational As being speaker. a motivational speaker, right. yeah. My, my big goal growing up was to be an Army officer, and, you know, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I woke up one morning. I'm, I'm about a year from out of Sandhurst, uh, the British equivalent of West Point, right. and I'm going, well, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an I'm a uh, Army officer now. Uh, What's, what's next? What's next? And I go, oh, the Olympics, which was the other dream to, right. to compete in the Summer Olympics. And uh, so, so the next thing I know is that I'm a Winter Olympian. And I'm like, well, this is kind of cool. Well, um, it turns out that my time in the Army ended. And during that last year or so, I agonized about what I would want to do with my life. Was I going to re-enlist or find something else? And I discovered. I was reading through the newspaper and I saw this thing called hospitality management. I go, I like that. I like meeting people. I like yeah. traveling. I like going to new places. So I uh, said my goodbyes to the Army and I moved to New York to pursue hospitality management. And while I, I was doing that, doing that degree, the bobsled bug started to bite again. Right. Like, man, I got to go pursue that. <laughs> you know, let, go follow the dream. Follow right. the dream. So I started doing that and met a guy who. Uh, you know, after hearing my personal story and, of course, being aware of the Jamaican bobsled story, I right. said, you know what, you should be a motivational speaker. Yeah. And I go, hmm, I like that. And I will, after the Olympics. So, you know, I, I trained, went to the Olympics in, in Nagano, Japan in 1998 and started right. speaking after that. Right. Now, so I guess a short answer to that is that I will probably be... Uh, a general manager of a hotel somewhere, hopefully in the you'd be in, uh, of yeah. Switzerland or you'd somewhere. You'd be uh, at a nice hotel somewhere worldwide, Probably, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Family and, and kids in tow, that's in, right. In they the, would be the, following dad around, be. wherein it's great now to be able to have a location to leave and come back to them as opposed to having to take them, move into different parts all over the world. Absolutely. To be able to have you know, I, I, I love coming home. I think I mentioned before that I'm, I'm a homebody of, of sorts. Right. And, you know, I, I love the New York area. It's uh, rich with history and culture and diversity. Right. Right. And yeah. most importantly, it's very close to Jamaica, right? <laughs> I, I can leave New York in the morning and be home by lunchtime. And a, a, lot, a lot of Jamaicans have found New York home. I mean, have made New York home. You know, that's one of the things that certainly helped. I've, I've been living there for 15 years now. And the fact that there were so many Jamaicans there right. and, and other West Indians right. helped me with my transition when I moved sure. initially from uh, Jamaica to New York. Right, right. That would be a big a big deal. Of course, uh, visiting your website, DevonHarrisLive.com, we mm -hmm. spoke about yesterday, a lot of great information on there. Some of the great things we're seeing, some of the phrases that have really helped shape you, some mm -hmm. of the tremendous phrases. i ha I got to say this one, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. I'm sure you you saw that somewhere and have taken that and really run with it. It's not what happens to you. It's not what happens to you, but how you, you react, react to it. Yeah. You really drove that home yesterday. And that is absolutely true, though. Uh, 
we have no choice um, over many of the things that happen to us. Right. The one thing we have a choice over, though, is, uh, is how we, act, we react to it, how our, right. what our attitude will be. Right. Our attitudes really is, is like a, the current that directs and drives our lives right. every single day. And so if you know, some bad stuff, some unsavory stuff happens to us and we um, focus on that and delve only into right. that as opposed to adopting a positive attitude, adopting a sunny outlook right. and go and look on the, the benefits. You know, right. somebody said, you know, for every adversity there's an equal or greater seed of benefit. Right. Yeah. And the challenge with most of us is that all we can focus on is adversity. Oh yeah. And if we you know, and, and so one of the challenges that I have and and um and turn the one of the mantle of shoulders is trying to get people to, to stop looking on the adversity, start oh, yeah. focusing more on the benefits. You highlighted yesterday the HTC Real Kids and that they have done a tremendous job of not focusing on their adversity but really focusing on the benefits. For viewers who weren't with us yesterday morning, just share real quick about what you were here for last Thursday mm -hmm. here at the Holiday Inn Hard Rock Parkway and who you were speaking to, the HTC yeah. Real Kids yeah, Luncheon. You know, extraordinary examples of leadership, um, the, these kids are called. And it's, 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 it is so true, it's amazing to sit and listen to some of the stories of, of, of adversity and the, the perseverance that was required for them in their young lives right. to, to triumph over that adversity. Right. Uh, you know, it's heart-wrenching, it's tear-jerking. Right. And the thing that impressed me most about these kids was their level of maturity. They were wise beyond their years and, right. and how they took, you know, would say take life by the horn, right? Oh, they, yeah. they really steered into those challenges and said, right. yes, I can. Yes, right. I will overcome. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to be a, a disillusioned crybaby. I'm going to right. pick myself up, brush myself off, and right. get going. Right. And that's what they did. Absolutely. And it is tremendous to think about the idea. These were just kids that were highlighted here in the county, a mm -hmm. county this large. Think about all the amazing kids that aren't highlighted, that weren't found uh, leading up to this event. Ori Telephone Cooperative does an amazing job obviously, but there's so many other great kids that are out there and a lot of kids that are looking at adversity and just not taking them easily. Absolutely, and you know, if we can, if there's one thing we can learn from these kids and apply to our life is the fact that we all have the ability, innate ability, right. to overcome any challenge right. that we face in our lives. Yeah. But we kind of have to make that decision initially and go, oh, yeah. well, yeah, you know, some bad things happen to me, but I'm not going to let that dictate how I live the rest of my life. I think the caliber of HTC reaching out to fund somebody like you, highlighted by your predecessor last year, the featured speaker, was a one who really faced some challenges, who had no arms, no legs, mm -hmm. and sat there and became a wrestler and was very active wrestling. Someone like you, obviously, one of the big pieces there that I saw in reading about you was growing up in abject poverty. Mm -hmm. I think you shared with us yesterday Olympic Gardens there yes. in Jamaica. Uh -huh. And coming out of that, what, what did it take, Devin? What, 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 what's in you? What is in some of the other friends or family members who also got through that? You know, I'm, I'm asked that a lot. And you know, I don't have uh, a patent on, on success. I, you know, <laughs> I don't have a blueprint yet. Um, but I think it, it's something that's inside of all of us and some people choose to go dig and find it and right. most people don't because it's so, it requires so much work it requires soul searching right. and most people frankly are quite unwilling to do that right. but as I look back on my life and I try to figure out what was the thing fiercely ambitious um, right. I had these dreams mm -hmm. that uh, couldn't shake obviously didn't want to shake and then beyond that I think um, just being fiercely persistent because right. uh, you, know, you can have the biggest dreams, the most vivid dreams, um, but if you're not persistent, right. and if you're not, you know, being a bulldog and just being, you know, totally burning with desire, with a passion yeah. Yeah. to achieve the goals and, and having a faith, you know, faith in your abilities, faith right. in, you know, I prayed every day and God right. helped me to get up really? this, but just believing 
-huh. and, and, and the more I believed in my abilities, right. uh, was the more, more persistent I became. Sure. And I think that has been my, my guideline, my, those, right. and those have been my watchwords, you know, at every stage, at right. every juncture of my life, even today. Devin, so often now you'll hear somebody who, like you, has been through a lot and come out strong and even stronger, did they, you're talking about God and obviously praying mm -hmm. a lot, was there somebody in addition to God, a person, a mother, a father, an aunt, a best friend that helped provide great inspiration for you to help show you that way, a teacher? There wasn't any one person who said, uh, you know, come on, hold on to my coattail, I'm going to take you, or... I went into and go, hey, can you be my mentor? There, are, right. you know, I, and I'm not suggesting that I did this all by myself because we all need what I call teammates. Right. But I didn't have a, a mentor as we understand the, the term mm -hmm. mentor. Mm -hmm. So sort of what I had were several sources of inspiration. And you know, the first person that lit my little lit, lit fire of my imagination was my grandmother. Really, your right? grandmother I was. I was a toddler, I was four, five years old, and she used to tell me these stories of these incredible feat that soldiers would perform. Oh yeah. And it just it sounded so amazing, so right. difficult, and my young mind said, you know, I don't know if I could do that, but I right. want to. Right. right. And so that really was where the seed uh, uh, to become a soldier was born. Right. Right. And as I grew up and discovered that you could actually enlist as an officer, I go, oh, that's what I want to do. Right. But so that's where it, that's where it started for me. But over the years, though, I've, I've uh, always used as a source of inspiration people, high, low, famous, not so famous, right? Um, who have overcome their particular circumstances. Which is why, you know, last week at the at the Real Kids function right. was such a powerful experience for me, because I'm seeing real life examples right. of people, individuals. Yeah, their children. But they have overcome some tremendous obstacles. And I'm right. going, wow, if they can do it, I right. can do it. If they yeah. can overcome their particular circumstances, sure. then, you know, the challenge that I'm facing in my life, I can right. be inspired by their story to oh, go yeah. strive to overcome mine as well. Right, right. And so that has been my key, if, oh, if yeah. there's one. How about on the track side? Anyone who is real active with you and something that spurns you to get active in, in track? I know what. Uh, our director pointed out you've been very active in track. You went from track to being an, a track star, to an mm -hmm. army officer, and then, of course, a world-renowned bobsledder. You know how the track thing came about? I'm in high school, and um, <laughs> in Jamaica, everybody is a sprinter. Everybody runs fast, <laughs> except me. Except <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, I so, can't imagine. So, you know, I'm running 100 meters, and I'm finishing third and fourth, and I wanted to win. And one day I went, and I ran 800 meters, and I ran, and I won. Wow. I'm like, ooh, I found my car. This is my race. And trap became a way for me to, to distinguish myself. And I was you know, very poor. I, you know, I played sports barefooted in high school. And there were a couple of guys who teased the living daylights out of me. You know? and, and so you know, I had to get good right. to say, look, you know, I'm better at something than you are. And talk about you know, people inspire you. My first year in high school, seventh grade, there was a guy, Richard Taylor, um, who came a distant last in every single race he ran. He, right. So I was seventh grade, right? He was in the eighth or ninth grade. A distant last. Right, right. The following year, you know, he trained really hard and he, I mean, he won everything. No way. And I go, in one year? Yes. And I go, if he can do it, I can do it. 